Hi and welcome. It's Sandy here with an altered card using the Karen Berniston Castle pop-up die set. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're like me, you want to be able to use your dies in as many different ways as possible. I've seen this die set used for a royal castle and a sand castle, but today it's a haunted castle with a spooky ghost and a creepy graveyard in the back. This is a great card for Halloween, whether the recipient is young or just young at heart. I've linked below in the description box to Karen's instruction video and to my blog where you can see more details on the products I've used. But for right now, it's eerie all the way. So let's get started on this fun card. With all the paper in my stash, would you believe I didn't have the shade of gray I wanted for this card? So I made my own with some 100 pounds soft finish cardstock and archival watering can ink. This is the castle portion of the die set along with the roof. The die provides crease lines which are important for the placement in the fold of the card later on. We also have the tab to join the sections together. I'm going to go cut this out. I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are. I've cut out the castle and scored it on all the crease lines. It's better to find and crease the score lines now so that they're easy to find later. Since we're making a different door, I kept the little hole, dots in the holes above the drawbridge. I used scotch tape to keep them in place. And now it's time to add some small but important details to our castle. I'm using one of the accessory pieces from the die set as a stencil and not worrying at all about perfection because after all, it is a haunted castle. I'm applying the color with a finger dauber and black archival ink. However, any black ink will work here. I like adding a lot of little details to my projects. In the long run, it adds so much interest to your finished product. I cut two roof pieces for my card. I wanted two covered turrets to make it just a little more spooky. And now I'm going to add some dark color to the roof pieces to make it appear that there might be shingles or slate. Now we can start some of our assembly. Just add a little bit of glue to the top part. Put one of your roof pieces on. It doesn't take much glue to hold this on. And then I always like to pick it up and crease it again on the crease line just to make sure that everything is in the right place. Now, this part's not necessary, but I wanted to add this second roof to this little piece. So just glue it on. Luckily, this is fast drying glue, so it doesn't take very long for it to get set in place. I decided that a cobweb would be just perfect for the door. So I cut a black one out earlier, and now I'm gonna place it where I think I want it. Just get a little idea there, and then I'm gonna cut it to fit. This cobweb came from Karen's Halloween Scenes die set, and it's just the perfect size for this door. A few little dots of glue, and we're ready to go. Make sure you don't put the dots in the center, because you're only going to be attaching it across the door. Okay, so there we go. All right, for our next alteration, we don't need either one of these two pieces, so no gasping aloud. We're going to do a little surgery here. Just cut straight across, just below those little notches. We want to leave a little bit of a wall because we still need to attach some things. Turn it over to the other side and do exactly the same thing, just making a little strip right along there and cutting off the other excess parts. And now you should just have your castle in the center. 
with two little arms extending. Oops, I see I was a little messy there. Let's clean that up a little bit. Okay, that's better. Now we're going to add our fence. I used Karen's house and fence die for this particular part, but it was a little bit too tall for my liking, so I cut it off at the bottom just below that X in the design of the fence. We're going to place one on this side, and we're going to do the same thing to the other one and place it on the other side. A little bit of glue and we're good to go. This is one example of why it was important to find those crease marks earlier because now you have a stiff fence on there but you're going to need to find the crease mark and fold it over. Whoops, my cobweb is not cooperating. Let's just get that tucked down there. Now find the crease mark, fold the fence, give it a good pinch. Now do the same thing on the other side. For these accessory pieces, it's a good idea to use a lighter weight cardstock. That way, after all the layers are on, it still folds neatly into the crease of the card. Now for a little bit more color, and let's cover up those white edges on the roof. It's beginning to look spectacular. And now for the card base. I made mine five and a half inches square, following Karen's instructions in her video, which is linked below. I didn't want the drawbridge portion because I'm using the spiderweb door, so I glued that little tab down as well. I didn't want the black showing on my card, so I decided to cut two little squares and glue them over that using the same paper. Once everything is put together in the card, it'll never be seen or noticed. Just be sure that your tabs are standing up. Okay, there we go. Earlier, I cut out a piece of scrap paper to resemble a pathway. I made it way too long, so I cut it to length. Just making sure that everything fits just where it is supposed to before I glue it down. It looks good. Let's do let's just add a little glue and put it in place. Alrighty, we're good to go. Now we're ready to assemble. We're going to add our castle to the tab. But oops, I forgot one thing. I should have done this while the piece was flat, but I forgot about it. So I'm going to put a little black on the inside so that when I add the graveyard section of this castle, I don't have to worry about getting it even on the bottom. I'm going to color it black so that it won't show. Of course, this would have been much easier to do it when it was flat, but that's the way it goes sometimes in crafting. I've added the pop-up to the tabs, and now you can see how important those crease lines are and that they line up with the center fold of the card. I like to give it a little test every once in a while just to make sure that everything is in place. I've already added the graveyard to the inside back of the pop-up section, and now I'm going to add a spooky tree from the Halloween scene die set. I'm going to put some glue on the front part of the trunk and glue it to the back portion of the pop-up. Here you can see why it's so important to use a lightweight cardstock for this section, for this portion, because too many layers the card would not close correctly. Let's just give it one more little test. Oh yes, I like it. We're good to go. For me, 
Adding the embellishments is what makes the card come to life. I have two boos cut here from the Halloween Elements set, and I'm going to glue them together with the black on the bottom, making it appear to be a shadow. Okay, how cute is that? Next I have a raven. The raven is from the Halloween Elements set as well. It has a hole in the die and I've marked the eyeball with a white jelly pen. I've then added him to the very top of the spooky tree. Next up is the bat, which I've added to a piece of clear acetate. I cut off the acetate to the length I wanted, added some glue, and now I'm going to glue it right to the back over the graveyard. Now for the ghost that I've cut from vellum. And I'm going to add just a little touch of glue to the front of the bottom of him. And then he's going to go right in one of those windows in the castle, making him, making him appear to be flying out. The last thing for the inside of this card is the creepy little hand. I'm going to put a little bit of ink on it to make it appear dirty. Then I'm going to see where I want him. Mm, that's looking pretty good. A little glue. Put him in place. And the inside is officially finished. I kept the outside of the card very simple using some fun paper because after all, the fun is on the inside. Thank you for joining me today and happy crafting.